It's BK on the air, and I'm so glad that Chance with Nostalgic Pod Blast has invited me on their channel to do a kind of a mini movie review tonight after we saw, what did we see? We saw Godzilla versus Kong. And you, you got the you got the order right that time. Yeah. Not Kong, but you could say it either way, Kong versus Godzilla. But the actual title is Godzilla versus Kong. So yeah. So we're, we're in glad you're studio we're, right now. Yeah. Using your mic, home it sounds studio. good. I like it. Yeah, it's great in here. Sometimes we have to fill in and do things at home, but we're glad to be here. We're going to give you a little mini spoiler-free review of the movie because we just got back from seeing it here locally, and uh, we, we're both fans of the MonsterVerse and the monsters and Godzilla and King Kong and all that, and this is the fourth film, I think, in the current run of uh, Godzilla films in that in that monster universe of films. It all started with Godzilla, then it went on to... Went on to uh, Kong Skull Island, and then the next film in the series was Godzilla, uh, King of the Monsters, which was just a couple of years ago, and now we have Kong, uh, Godzilla, see I almost said it backwards, Ka Godzilla versus King, uh, Godzilla versus Kong now, so we saw it, and uh, I guess the, I can give my first thoughts on it, I'm, I'm a sucker for the monster movies, if I go to the monster films, or just a film in general, and I know that I'm not going to a movie that's that's uh, out of Africa quality, uh, uh, nothing against out of Africa, but the, the Academy Award winning films that, that I know what I'm going to see, I can kind of check my brain at the door and, and enjoy a great big a movie with two big titan monsters fighting. Actually, more than two monsters in this are fighting, there always are. So that's what I kind of, uh, that's what I kind of thought of it, at least the first thoughts. I'm not going to give you any spoilers, thank goodness. We're gonna t not going to tell you how it ends. We're not going to uh, give anything away because we do want people to go see it. So, And we talked about it extensively on, on my show over the past couple of weeks, past couple, couple of Saturdays on BK on the Air. I was always amazed at how Warner Brothers wants to release this on HBO, on, um, on uh, what is it, the streaming one they're showing it on? HBO Max, is that what HBO Max. HBO Max. And then and they release it at the theater at the same time, and I don't agree with that at all. And I've made uh, that's no secret with me that I've that I've never agreed with that. If you're going to release it in the theater and on streaming home video, uh, streaming home service like that, you're kind of cutting the throat of the theater owners. I mean, bring it out in the theater first. I know COVID may be a concern with some people, but I, I would like for it to come out in the theater to see for people to watch it first before they make that decision to stream it because you're taking money away from the theaters at this point. They need to recoup uh, some of their lost revenue and you know stream it later. That'd be all right if you wanted to stream it later. But yeah, um, you saw it too. and uh, I saw it twice. Yeah, that's right. This was your second time. You said, I'm not going to say a word. I'm nope. not going to say a word. I'm not going to spoil it. And I knew you weren't going to spoil anything for me, but I just asked you one question last night after you went to see it. I said, well, just tell me this. Text me thumbs up or thumbs down. At least give me that. And you texted me a thumbs up. A symbol, big so. thumbs up. So you thought it was thumbs up. He gave it a thumbs up. If if it's a thumbs up and thumbs down, I give it a thumbs up. There's a lot of there's a lot of when you when you say this movie was a roller coaster ride, this one really is because this the, the writers and the director of this film have decided uh, people kind of want to see the monsters fight and the monsters in the film. They they, they don't want to include a lot of that human the, the human drama and all that story. That that's what the first Godzilla movie of the series was kind of had maybe a little more of that in it, which was a fine film, and they went that direction. But everybody. I don't think we need a build up to monsters now because we know these monsters, we know who they are, and we don't need really an introduction to these monsters. This movie just kind of got started right from the first uh, 10 minutes it kind of got us started, which that's one thing that I did like about it. What about you? Yeah, there's a lot of surprises in this movie. The thing I liked the best was the sound, the use of sound. Oh yeah, it was great. Those are always usually really, really well done in these films. Now, where was the theater we're at tonight? Oh, we were in uh, Ackworth at the NCG Cinema it's an NCG, in yeah. right. So, so it didn't have Atmos sound, which is no, a, an Atmos. exclusive of American of AMC theaters, right? But I kind of like the sound better at the Studio Movie Grill in Marietta. It had better separation. They've got great sound there too. Yeah. I mean, the sound blew me away. So right. I can't imagine how cool this would be at an AMC theater with the Atmos sound system, the Dolby Atmos. Oh yeah, that would be great. I, I saw uh, Spider-Man: uh, Homecoming in Atmos out in uh, Los Angeles about three or four years ago. So it was, it sounded great out there. That's the first time I'd ever been to one. I'm going to give theater. a couple things away. Not major spoilers. I know you said you want to keep the spoilers. Sure. Free. Yeah. You know the major ones. Yeah. But uh, there are a couple spoilers like, let's just say the robot Godzilla makes an appearance. Mecha Godzilla, yeah, which he's an old character from the old films anyway, so there's no no surprise there, yeah. They they were really good at not showing him, him it, whatever it is, in the trailers. There is one trailer where you get a little quick shot of him if you freeze frame it and look at it. But yeah, Me Mecha Godzilla is in this film, uh, just like he it kind of was. I keep wanting to call him the he. It was. 
in the, in the old it films. Was. But if I'm not mistaken, there's one of the old films where he started out with Godzilla skin on him. Right. And then they knocked it off, and then, oh, he's a robot. So they didn't do that here. But but it's it's overall a, a very satisfying monster And that's the kind of ride. movie I like to see on the big screen, okay? I'm a geek. I like you action. I like explosions. Right. I like music. I like, right. you know, and, and, and I'm such a nerd. Like, when it comes to the Marvel movies, sometimes movies will just really, like, touch my heart. I know that sounds corny. But seriously, we're like, I won't ball like right. a little girl, but I will, like, tear up at certain you're, scenes. You're, you're this more, movie more with like the awesome that. spectacle of what you're looking the at. Spe- it's, yeah, well, it's because really... I've waited for years. I've read comic books since right. I was 11 years old, and now they have yeah. the technology to put these on the big screen effectively. They have the technology. We can rebuild him. We have the technology. Better, but they have faster. they have the technology of oh, CGI yeah. combined with models and everything else to really make it real on the big screen. And this was just my cup of tea because ever since I was a kid, I love crazy Japanese live action like The Space Giants. Right. Which was filmed in Tokyo in 1966. And Ted Turner, Superstation TBS, played him in the late 70s and, and you 80s. watched him probably the same time I did, yeah. Ultraman. These were like the godfathers of the Transformers, because Goldar would transform into sure. a rocket. As all, did, all three of them would, yeah. As did Gam and yeah. Silver. And the crazy thing is, they, these Japanese creators gave Goldar a wife, a robot wife. Right, yeah. And he's 50 great. feet tall, supposedly, yeah. and she's like normal size. Yeah, and we so did, how as, does that work? As kids, we didn't really think about that whole problem, you know, when we were kids. We didn't really worry about the logistics of that, did we? No, no. So, but yeah, those were great shows. Growing up, that was our big giant monster shows that were like Godzilla that used to come on uh, Channel 17, WTCG in Atlanta. Where Ultraman, Spectreman, Space Giants. All of those. Uh, Ultraman being, I think, the most popular one because it's kind of still going on. And Ultraman was very popular over the years. And they actually used a, um, I showed you a photo, they actually used the, or one of the old original Godzilla suits from the 70s in an episode of uh, Ultraman. Can you pull that up while I talk? I'll pull, I'll pull it. Let me Hold see if I can find it. We'll show everybody. He was that. showing That's me really before cool. we rolled this photo, and I wasn't aware of that. Even and as a, even as a kid, I saw it on the on the on the program. And I'm like, that looks like Godzilla a suit me- with stuff added to it to make us not think it's a Godzilla suit. Let me look it up. And I've got every episode of Spectre Man. I need to go back and rewatch it's, it. It's, it's Ultraman. Got that it's one. Ultraman. Oh, okay. It's I actually it's on Spectre Ultraman. Man. No, it's Ultraman. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's all right. But it's actually on an episode of Ultraman, the original one in the '60s television show. Now, look, I'm not going to say who wins this battle, but I will say this. A lot of people don't like seeing Kong die at the end of every movie, whether it's a 1976 version with Jessica Lange or the Naomi Watts version from, what, 2005? Uh, Peter Jackson's version. Peter yeah, Jackson's right. version. Which I wasn't a real big fan of. It was okay, but it was missing something, and I don't know what it was. I can't put my finger on it. Oh, you got the picture. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it, yeah. Here's the Godzilla suit. This is how he looked in Ultraman, if I can get that to focus in there. But if you can see that. That is Godzilla from Ultraman with just like some uh, dinosaur uh, fin hood on him there <laughs> to make him to make you not think that it's Godzilla from the show Ultraman in the '60s. They just they wanted to save money, so they just grabbed the Godzilla suit and put him on Ultraman. How cheap is this? That? This film is great. It, 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 Chance said the sound is great, the direction is great. Everyone gives a great performance in it. There's nothing in it. There are a few things that are over the top. You thought, well, if you if you take your logical brain. To this film, you're going to be like, well, uh, I can't believe that happened. Well, it's it's a movie about giant monsters. How about checking a little bit of your brain at the door before you go in to watch this? Because this is not, like I say, Academy Award out of Africa you're going to see. It is a action <laughs> People forget about that. They're like, oh, I can't believe that the monsters, uh, that, God's, that, that Khan uses a, a weapon, a hand weapon in this. I'm like... You have a problem with that, but you don't have a problem with giant monsters. And this fighting, weapon's you know, badass. Like, yeah, he's got a great like axe weapon in this, and there's a great it's a great fight scene. They, there's two or three fights in the film. You've got two two big bouts, and then one one bigger fight at the end. But uh, it's well done. It's well directed. There's a lot of sp- spectacular shots of the of the of the craft that they're flying in when they go to a certain place where they go. Well, it's, just tell it's, them Middle Earth. Yeah, it's it was a <laughs> it's a middle it's a big middle part of the Earth uh, where where things happen near the Earth's core. Yeah, so. A whole different, whole sustaining ecosystem down there, which is great. But the whole, the mute, the score. Uh, I had to look up his meaning name. the musical music. Of yeah, course, the score. For the, layman the out score there. for the film is done by the same guy that does um, that does that did Thor Ragnarok, and I can't remember his name now. I have to look it up. But it's the guy that was uh, was was with the uh, the new wave group Devo. I've got it right here. It's Devo. He was with Devo. He was. And, uh, <laughs> it was a great film got, score. Tom. Hulkenborg. Hulkenborg did the music uh, for Thor Ragnarok too, which was great. But overall, electronic sound and music with with orchestra mixed in, an orchestra mixed in. And so Kyle it, Chandler's great. in the cast, and of course right. he's from Atlanta. We're from Atlanta, Georgia. Both of us, uh, Barry King. By the way, yeah. he's the host of 
BK on the Air, which is a live radio show weekly Saturdays from 10 a.m. to noon on W. BHF in Cartersville, 100.3 FM and AM 1450. You could hear us on WBHFradio.org or on the TuneIn app. And uh, thanks to Chance, I'm now on uh, the Fistful of Radio every every Saturday, which is great. At 8.30 a.m. And then and you're after PM. us, the Nostalgic Pod Blast. And no, Al and Tom have not been fired. I have not been fired. We haven't broken up. We're going to be back doing our thing uh, Sunday, this coming Sunday after Easter at 3.30, doing a live show like we always do. And, uh, and it'll be on Fistful of Radio a week later. But, uh, you know, we're happy to be partners and bookends. We're kind of, you called us cousins. We are cousins. We're a nostalgic cousin show. We've we crossed, crossed over quite a bit, and I think that's great. They had me on an episode of their podcast a couple of weeks ago, and I had a blast. I had a pod blast <laughs> being on with you guys. Uh, pun intended. Yeah, pun Now, let's talk intended. about the movie. That's what people want to hear about. They don't want to hear about us, but well, uh, yeah. there's plenty of action. I think it delivered. If you're looking for a big fight, it's kind of like going to see a rumble. You know, let's get ready to right. rumble. That's it's exactly like a boxing like. match. Yeah. And that's a good way to describe it. And it, it was satisfying. It was satisfying. And I satisfying. love how they show Kong on the ship being transported somewhere. I won't right. say where. But it's, it's pretty realistic showing how they transported that big hulking creature. Right, because they had to restrain him. They had to, they had to, they had to drug him, you know, or he, or he wouldn't be able to, to do much. But, yeah, that's part of the story, too. And we have a call coming in. Okay. Hello, uh, you are on the air with Barry and Chance. Who's, who's calling? Uh, this is Michael Hopkins. Hey, Michael, this is the guy I saw the movie with on Thursday. Awesome, great. So you've seen this. Michael, do you have any thoughts about the movie? Well, I will say this, it has nonstop action, incredible special effects, and to me, there was never a lull at all in that movie the entire time. I'll agree with that, yeah. I mean, it just went from scene to scene to scene to scene. Very, very well stated. You're right, it, it really did. Not, not one. You know how I know a movie loses me when I'm watching it, and this happens to me sometimes in films? If I'm in the theater... And I either look at my watch or I find myself looking at what time it is on my phone. You know what I'm in there. I know you're not supposed to do that when I have a, the brightness turned down. But if I look at my clock, that means I'm bored. And yeah. I didn't do that once during this film. And Neither a lot did of, I. A lot of films lately I haven't done that. Yeah. And when we saw it, Michael, remember I was on my phone a little bit towards the beginning. So there was a lot of stuff I missed that I picked up on this time. And, and Michael, not to tell on you, but I looked over at you a couple times and you are kind of dozing off. Were you bored at all in the movie or were you just a little tired? No, it wasn't that. Whenever that happened when, we, when I went with you and Al a couple of movies ago, if I have a big lunch, which if you remember, I had a pretty big lunch. I couldn't even finish it at the Marietta Diner. Right. It's just, it's just in my gene pool. If I have a really full stomach, I, I just, I, I, I doze off. But eventually... It wore off, and, and you know I was able to to focus. So, how many stars do you? How many how many uh, bananas do you give this movie? Bananas. Well, you know, out of five, five bananas. being the best. What what would you give it as a, as an action popcorn type movie? Four. Four out of five. I know, I know you you were saying you like the sound. Yes. And, and, but I got to tell you, I thought that the sound in the theater that we were in was deafening. That's because you were really sitting right did. under a speaker. Remember, I pointed it out to you. Afterwards, yeah. you're like, man, that was loud. And I go, well, look, you're sitting right under the speaker. Well, I don't know, though. I mean, if it was that loud, I mean, at some point, you, you, have, to, you have to think about the people that are sitting in, 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 the, in that last row. But okay, I don't know. It's just my opinion. Okay. I guess it's going to vary from theater to theater, yeah, depending on where you are. Other yeah. than that, though, you had a good time, right? Oh yeah, I mean it was nonstop action. You could, if you were bored in that movie, then you had no business walking in. There you go. If you're bored in that film, you need to take your pulse to make <laughs> sure you're alive. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and it was packed. I must say, it was packed tonight, and Good. it was packed when he and I and saw it on it Thursday. Was, it was a, it was a surprise when I walked in because I'm used to seeing three people in the theater, and it's usually the three of us. Right. Not the case with this. And I read online, I think it's done $19 million in two days. It's probably done even yeah, more today. probably more than that now. Yeah, if it's overseas, it's bringing money too. So that's great. I mean, that, that's not a lot of money right now, but we're con considering the, the COVID problem still. That's, that's, a, that's good money for at least what's going on with the, with the pandemic right now. I think that's good. It's a good shot in the arm for the movie, the movie theaters. They need it. They really do. Absolutely. Well, anything else, Michael, before we cut you loose? Oh, that was it. I, I, I appreciated the opportunity to get to go and see it with you. Oh, it, our, it was my pleasure, and we'll do it again, man. Have a great weekend. Happy okay. Easter. Take care. 
All right, bye. And we have some Facebook comments. Uh, Ryan Settle says, everybody knows when you put an overgrown monkey and lizard together in a big city, it equals a disaster. Mike Smith says, howdy. And then Michael, who just called, said, hi, Chance and Barry. And I think we got a text. It might be from Al Hardy. Why are you doing a movie review on the Podblast page with Barry? <laughs> Why not? I mean, we're partners. You don't have to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll 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 deal with that offline. Anyway, um, because we can. Right. I mean, we're because right. we're friends yeah. and we're partners, and uh, uh, good you know, idea. you promote yeah, us, and we're going to promote you any yeah. way we can. Yeah. That's why. It's a good idea. It was a great movie too. Call and, us uh, out. Call in. You know my number. Call the number 404-944-0239. Give us a buzz. But he didn't see the movie, so maybe he shouldn't call in. It's a great it's a great film. I give it a thumbs up. I, I, I usually it, it depends on what movie it is. Whether I do the star review, you know, a certain amount of stars mean it's okay. I've gotten to where lately where I just give it like a, a Siskel and Ebert thumbs up or thumbs down. I either yeah. kind of liked it. I do a thumbs up, thumbs down, or a thumbs midway like this where I'm like, eh, whatever, I could take it or leave it. But if it's a thumbs up, I can recommend it. But if, if I give something just a total thumbs down, at least with me, that means I just really didn't like it. So, yeah, and, and this isn't highbrow. Like you said earlier, it's not highbrow entertainment. It's a popcorn movie for gosh sake. But so. it is highbrow it, it is high brow entertainment when it comes to the, the effects. Yeah. Everything looks crisp and beautiful. It was beautifully shot. A lot of shots in it are beautiful beautiful the landscapes and the the camera angles that he used for it and uh, if I had to rank it let me rank it on the four films that are part of this this group of films it started with Godzilla then we went to Kong Skull Island then we went to uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters and then now we have this one in this four film uh, group of places that sent, that take place in that monster universe that they have right now. My favorite one is still Kong Skull Island, and you haven't seen it. Yet. Uh, you, you have me the disadvantage. You, just, not you missed it. that one. I've for seen some all of them, but that one. I don't know why I didn't see that movie, but I'm gonna buy it tonight. I love that one. That one's the best out of all of them, at least for me. And for me, personally, this one really probably comes really close to tying with uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters, the one after Kong Skull Island. I really enjoyed that one too. The last one that came out before this, and then this one. So uh, the first Godzilla film in this current run of them was my least favorite, but it was still a good movie to start out this uh, this whole storyline that's going on where these movies are intertwined and become one universe. It's the it's not the Marvel universe; it's the monster universe. That's, that's what right. It is. That's it's right. Their own monster universe. But uh, again, Kong does not die at the end. But I'm not going to say who wins the battle. You got to go check it out on the big screen. It's worth it. And what they did there, I, I didn't necessarily want one to win or kill the other, but how they resolved that and what did happen, I think, was a great. It was the best thing that could happen. So you'll see what we mean when you actually go see it. So I, and we both want you to go see it. It's a great film. And see it in the theater. I mean, if you have concerns about COVID, I can understand that. And not want to go to the theater. That's your right. But but uh, going to the theater, like Chance said, to see a big movie like this, it's it's unbelievable. No no one's home theater can rival a true well made movie theater that's out there that plays things off film the way they do because. I know people have really great sound systems and theaters in their house now, but still, I love going to a theater. I don't have a real theater that's out there that you can go to, and that's that's part of the experience. The popcorn smell, the seats. We got the plush seats that recline, which are great there. I mean, you almost you could fall asleep if you're if you're sleepy because they're heated and everything. You got pretty comfortable in yours. That was good. Oh, yeah. good seats that they have there, and you can they're a little you bit more recline back. Yeah, it's great, and and and. The, drink, eating the popcorn and, and drinking the, 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 the soft drinks and stuff. It's all an experience. It's a theater movie experience, and that's what I like about it. It's great. I've even got my uh, Skull Island Reign of Kong coffee mug here that I'm drinking out of from Universal Studios down in uh, Orlando just for this occasion. You brought your pop hot so you, popcorn. And MCG's great because they give you free refills of popcorn. You can take it with you. And free refills on drinks, too. How, how, how cool is that? That's great. And uh, there's also a cool moment um, with a little girl who can somehow communicate with Kong uh, a telepathically. Little, a little deaf girl. Yeah. And the actress is deaf as well, I found out. Did you know the actress? No, I deaf? did not know that. The little girl, I think, is deaf. The actress. Oh, I got the uh, yeah the uh, the ticket stub that we went. I always love, I always, movies that I've loved, I've always wait, saved ticket stubs and put them away in a, in a little container and kept them and looked back on them. And, what I do there is bring them out and look at the date and go, wow, I can't believe I saw that film. And what year was that out? I can't believe that I saw that. <laughs> you keep all your stuff. I have I have my ticket stub somewhere for Star Trek The Motion Picture from 1979 somewhere. I still have that one. I kept a lot of my ticket stubs. Why Why do I do anything? But I did that. And I, don't I do why. that too. I don't save a lot of things because I, I don't have a lot of room. But that's one thing that I say. And if you're scared to go to the movies, don't be. I mean, they were sterilizing everything. Like the little... 
the freestyle Coke machine, right. you know, were, every, every yeah. other moment, you know, they're spraying it down. They have like the social distancing in the seats. It's totally safe. And they're, yeah, and they're seating too. I mean, if you're with a couple that, or your wife or your, your husband or whatever you happen to be with, it's two seats, then an empty, then two, then an empty, and they, they're spaced out that way. But, uh, but if you're, if you can get two together that you're with, yeah. If you're, if you're concerned about that, but again, you can stream it on, on HBO Max if you want, but it's a, it's a really big movie and you really need a big screen to see everything that's going on. If you try to watch things on a smaller screen sometime, you will miss a lot of things that happen. It does not translate. It does not translate. And this is one of the films, kind of like the Marvel films that are big spectacles too, that we have to see in the theater, you know, the Marvel universe, uh, which we saw some trailers too, which is great. It's just, it was just good to go back to the theater again to see trailers and, oh, that's coming out. We saw the big stand-up of uh, No Time to Die in the hallway, the James Bond thing that's been pushed off and pushed off and pushed off. Now, I'm still wondering if James Bond's ever going to be released this year. They say it is, but... In November, be, right? I'm hoping. I mean, yeah. they've pushed that one off like three different dates now, so hopefully it'll be coming out as Daniel Craig's last film, so we'll be able to go see that. But, yes, Godzilla versus Kong and uh, the, the, the title... Lives uh, the movie lives up to the title's name. It really does. Yep, highly recommended. And we're gonna do it again sometime. And uh, next time we'll get Al and Tom to join us, and we'll have a, sure. a total right. mind meld, emerging of the minds right. of the Nostalgic Pod Blast and right. BK on the air. And again, in case uh, some of you missed it, uh, Al and Tom and I we're gonna be doing a show real soon. The Nostalgic Pod Blast and Barry, as always, is on every single week. Live on the air from 10 a.m. to noon, Every and then he's Saturday. also on nostalgic. Uh, he's also on Fistful of Radio, right. 8:30 a.m. Saturdays and Sundays, and then after us at 5 p.m. Exactly. Saturdays and Sundays. We have the nostalgic talk retro thing really uh, covered. We got it covered. We sure the, do. We, we sure do. We're nostalgic cousins here. We are cousins. All right. Well, uh, I guess we'll wrap it up unless there's something else you want to add. No, or? big thanks to Chance for asking me on tonight to do this. It was a good idea. I didn't even think about it because you're like, why don't we go online and review? Uh, Godzilla vs. Kong after it's over. I'm like, why didn't I think about it? Well, you know, Al and I do a review. It's called uh, Movie Views, and we see movies together and review them. And so I'll probably see it a third time with him, and then we'll do another review, like on our outfits, like YouTube, our YouTube channel, The Nostalgic Pod Blast. But I'll see it again. I loved it. And I you, love this movie. You can hear me on all the places these guys are. I, I'm I'm on YouTube. I also, you can find me on uh, um, Anchor and Pot and um, Anchor and Spotify and SoundCloud as well. We always put it up there, and along with a uh, fistful of radio. I'm glad to be a part of uh, the fistful of radio family. I'm glad you're a fine addition, man. And it's like <laughs> it's like the geeks take over on the weekend. You know why not? Yeah. We're all everybody's off work on the weekend, so why can't the geeks get in there? And, and you have two opportunities to check it out and geek out with us on Saturday or Sunday. Fantastic. All right, man. I love it. Well, we'll see you next time, and uh, have a great, great Easter. Happy Easter, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.